Hi, I'm Cheryl Luckemeyer, and I'm doing my presentation on children's illustrator, Holly Conger. Holly grew up in Colorado, Texas, Alabama, and Tennessee. She currently resides in Nashville with her husband, their daughter, and son, and what she describes as her goofy basset hound. Holly's work has appeared everywhere, in magazines, greeting cards, workbooks, advertising, CD covers, packaging, and children's book. Holly's talent began at a young age. She was very good in school, but her favorite subject was art. In third grade, Holly's art teacher presented her with a big green pencil case for having the best drawing in class. Holly still has it today. Five years later, in the eighth grade, she discovered she could make, an, make art for a living when a graphic designer came for, for a career day. So after high school, Holly went to, on to earn a bachelor's degree in graphic design and advertising from O'Moore College of Design in Franklin, Tennessee. She started her career at a large publishing firm. She became pregnant in 2004 and decided to branch out on her own so she could spend more time with her daughter. She documented the year-long process of becoming an illustrator in her blog, appropriately named Becoming an Illustrator. Holly's present is well felt throughout the web. Her portfolio can be found at her uh, website www.hollyconger.com. As I mentioned earlier, her blog, A Girl Who Creates. It showcases diverse creative work and offers advice and inspiration to fellow artists. Woogie Wednesday is a site she runs where she does artwork with her daughter. She's also on social media. She's on Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Holly has quite the client list. A partial list includes Better Homes and Gardens, Hooked on Phonics, Oopsie Daisy, this, there's wall hangings and growth charts that children love. She's done work for Sterling Publishing and she designed the box for a pair of boots for John Deere and she also does designs for Uppercase Living. She's done work for Gibraltar Stamps, Scholastic, Ladybug Magazine, Flash Kids, Highlights, lots of publishing, DK Publishing. She's done stickers for Creative Teaching Press, Golden Books. The Backyard Pirates books are very popular from the Magnics. She's done Ideal Books, Picture Window Books, and Jumping Jack. More books she's done for Magic Wagon, Standard Publishing, Learner Publishing, which includes Cloverleaf Books and Millbrook Press, and she's also done work for Harcourt. And there's also many other clients she's done work for. She's, of course, Barnes & Noble sells the books, She's done uh, artwork for the Children's Hospital of Minnesota, Chirp Magazine, Fisher Price, Hidden Valley Ranch, Weekly Reader, and The Right Group. Holly's work is in three main styles. The one we'll focus on mostly today is painterly. She starts with a sketch and she brings it into Illustrator and creates layers and outlines and then she adds texture and shading and painterly and oftentimes adds a few more effects in Photoshop. Junkadoodles is Holly's trademark artwork. It's also count, called found objects. She makes extremely whimsical and fun work. And there's a book that recently came out called Love My Shoes that was done in that style. And she also does clay work. A lot of it she does for churches and Sunday schools. And here's some of the painterly style. Here's the sketches. Here's a work that was completely done in Illustrator. 
here's some more options. Uh, she's done books on kings and fairy tales, board games, maps. Her school styles are very popular. She's also done work that show kids in the kitchen and animals. Here's some more of her work. Uh, she doesn't do a whole lot of sports illustration. She says that's because she's not a real big sports fan. And these works were all vector graphics that were done in Illustrator. Now her found object style, also known as Junkadoodles. These are some fun drawings. This is my favorite one here. Here's some more church work, nice sailboat, picnic scene. This one's fun here with the mouse. This she did for a recycling day. And this pizza has a lots of lots of different objects on it. And this is the main image on her portfolio website. And here's a bunch more. And still more. And here's that Love My Shoes book that's very popular. This is a wall hanging that's for sale. Now the final style, uh, clay sculpture. I couldn't find very much of, much of this on the web from her. Um, a lot of the stuff is done for Sunday schools and churches. But it's a cool style. And where does Holly go for inspiration? Well, she gets a lot of it from her daughter and her son and all the things that go along with having children. She likes to watch children's shows with her children and she watches their reactions to color, sound, and everything else. She says that Sesame Street has been by far the biggest idea generator for her illustrations. Her favorite classic artists are Picasso, Matisse, Andy Warhol, and Lichtenstein, and she would have loved to study under da Vinci. She says that she also is a mirror writer. And she has some current favorite illustrators, uh, Laura holliska Baith, Sashiko Yoshikawa, Richard Johnson, and Jimmy Pickering. And Holly says she tends to like a more wacky and wonky style of illustration. She also loves vintage junk and includes it in her work. You, here you can see Holly's studio, and it's big and cheerful, and it's full of ideas. And when inspiration strikes, Holly likes to do her sketches with a pencil. Her medium of choice is her computer, and she's proud to say she uses a Mac and has never owned a PC. When asked what her favorite computer program is, she says Adobe Illustrator. Holly has advice for beginning illustrators. Always follow your dream. And the best advice she ever received was to accept her style. What that means is you may not like how you draw something. You think you're not drawing it right, but it's actually your style. And you have to market yourself. You've got to set goals for marketing and follow them. Uh, things that have worked for Holly, her website and blog, link exchanges, uh, detailed meta tags on her site so people can find her, and she utilizes various promotional websites. And you have to have great time management skills and stick to your deadlines. And be sure to keep a work, good balance between work and family. And things that help Holly grow as an illustrator, researching and networking with other illustrators, looking at picture books, joining a critique group, sketching daily, and observing others. Here shows an example of Holly's painterly process. Uh, she first does a sketch in pencil, then she brings it into Illustrator. She draws out the flat colors first, then she does a little more work on it and adds details, and then she brings it into painterly and she adds, does some painting by shading, 
highlighting and texturing. She loves Painter Lee's sponge tool to give things texture. And this is the final project. I will now show you one of Holly's tips in Illustrator. If I can close this. There we go. I took one of Holly's designs and I did a quick sketch of it. Well, I sketched it in Illustrator and made it kind of look as much as, as close to that as I could. And first we're going to start out by doing some easy coloring. Holly's suggestion is to create a document in, like say, Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever you're working in of colors that you commonly use and any background textures, things like that. And then you, you get your drawing and you put the layers in the appropriate order and then you start coloring items in. We'll start by coloring in the first ear. That is the body color. So we'll use the eyedropper tool. I've moved my tools around. And we'll fill it with that. Then we'll do the other ear. Then we'll do the inner ears. And those are colored with the skin tone. Then we'll color in the bottom of the face, which is skin tone. We'll add the rosy cheek texture. And we'll fill the top of the head in. Next, we'll fill in this left leaf over here. And then we'll fill in the outer flower. And then the inner color of the flower. And then the swirl or spiral. And we have to make sure that we change it back to just the line. Then we'll fill in the eyebrows. Those were a deeper red. And again, we'll switch that back to just the line. The nose and eyes are already colored, covered in, colored in, and then we'll do the background. I created a dot background and I put it in my swatches. So I just need to pull that over. Oops, did that wrong. I'll highlight the background again. And then I'll fill it. And then we'll do the bottom part in that green again. And the top we'll do in teal. Oops. And then we have our final product. That's all.